Hello and welcome to our story today. This is Leo and the Gorgon's Curse by Joe Todd Stanton. Hello, dear reader. You have caught me just as I have finished solving one of the greatest mysteries my family has ever known. For generations, a legend has been told of a brownstone so mighty and brave that they became a Greek hero. But all the evidence was thought to have been lost to the sands of time. However, I never stopped believing, and when I found this small shard of pot hidden deep in the brownstone family vault, I knew I was on to something. Years of research and exploring eventually led me to this temple in Athens, containing a hidden shrine to the Greek heroes of old. Inside, I discovered all the proof I needed to finally confirm that the legend was real. Now, along with the names Achilles, Hercules, Odysseus and Theseus, we can add a new one. Leo. This is the story of Leo, the brownstone who became a Greek hero. As soon as Leo was old enough to fend for himself, his parents sent him away to study in the great city of Athens. Famous for being the centre of mythological knowledge and learning, they decided it was the perfect place for a young brownstone. At one time, the city was under constant threat of destruction at the hands of countless mythical creatures. That was until the great goddess of wisdom and war, Athena, became its protector. She would stop at nothing to keep her Athenians safe. Athena was proud of the safe city she had created. To ensure it stayed this way, she trained up heroes and sent them on epic quests to protect it. The Greek heroes were worshipped by the people of Athens for their bravery, strength and skill. As a student of mythology in Athens, Leo had many classes. But his parents had forbidden him from taking part in the one class he wanted to do more than any other. All the other students undertook hero training so they might become one of Athena's champions themselves one day. Leo longed to be a hero. However, he was always taught that a brownstone's mission and motto was to protect mythological creatures, not to fight them. A fact he was reminded of every day by the pin his parents gave him before he left for home. So Leo kept to his studies, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't forget his dream. He decided to come up with a plan. He'd heard Perseus was headed to Athena's temple early the next morning, so before he was called to his first class, he sneaked away. All he wanted was to hear the epic quest that Athena was giving to the great hero. There have been sightings of Satis, an enormous, deadly sea serpent near Poseidon's temple. If you can bring me back a sign that it won't be causing any more trouble, you will be richly rewarded. Leo knew that he should go back to his room, but his curiosity took hold of him. He wanted to witness a real adventure so much. The journey to Poseidon's temple was long and treacherous and Leo soon started to regret his decision. Then he tripped. As Leo came to, he saw a huge dark shape in the distance. It was the dreaded sea serpent that Athena had spoken of. Leo didn't know what to do. This was a giant, menacing creature who could destroy him in a second. But it was also his chance to prove himself. Mustering all of his might and stealing himself for an epic battle, he ran headlong towards the creature. 
and then promptly cowered in fear. All seemed lost until he noticed someone appear behind the monster and gently remove the arrow from its tail. In an instant, the serpent relaxed. Leo couldn't believe it. The sea serpent had completely transformed. It didn't look like it would be causing anyone any trouble ever again. He thanked the girl for saving him and as a token of his gratitude, he gave her the only valuable thing he had, his pin. Then, knowing he would have to explain himself back in Athens, he took the arrow to show Athena. As soon as he got back, he tried to find Athena to tell her the whole story. However, once the Athenians saw the arrow, they made up their own minds about what had happened. And suddenly, Leo wasn't just Leo anymore. He was Leo the Serpent Slayer. By the time Athena threw a celebration in his honour, it became harder and harder for him to ever imagine telling her the truth. From that day on, Leo was no longer just a student of mythology. He was a hero. People began to treat him differently and it wasn't long before Athena called on him herself, this time to give him a quest of his very own. The Cyrenian hind, a gigantic ma magical deer, has been eating our crops. Make sure this doesn't happen again. Leo boldly took on the challenge, eager to prove that he really was the hero Athena believed him to be. Though try as he might, he could never forget the promise he had made to his parents. He could never harm a magical creature. He had to come up with a more inventive way to complete Athena's challenge. Athena, impressed by his skills, called on Leo to get rid of more and more mythical creatures, meaning he had to come up with more and more ingenious ways to get creatures safely from Athens. Leo captivated the Sphinx by making it a toy from his spare quills. He used tasty treats to lead the Minotaur deep into the dark maze of the woods. He stopped the Cyclops stomping on livestock by fashioning him a special monocle. He used Pegasus as bait to lure the fearsome Hydra back to the marshes. He returned Cerberus to the underworld using nothing more than a giant stick. He teased the Nemean lion with the impossible to unravel Gordian knot. And finally, he managed to stop the harpies from stealing Athens' food supplies by teaching them how to fish. The more monsters he removed from Athens, the bigger his fame grew. His classmates soon became distrustful. How could Leo be a great hero when he never even taken part in one lesson on swordplay or wrestling? Their gossip started to spread quickly. And Athena had some suspicions of her own. So she came up with a plan to work out Leo's loyalties once and for all. The Gorgon is a terrible fiend that can turn any mortal it looks upon to stone. It has found its way to Poseidon's temple and it could attack Athens at any moment. I want you, Leo, to find this monster and bring me back its head. If you do this, you will be known as the greatest hero Athens has ever known. Oh dear. Leo left Athens with a heavy heart. His lies had gone too far and now he could see no way out. He found the path he had taken all that time ago and followed it back to Poseidon's temple. Readying himself for what was sure to be a dangerous mission, he entered. To avoid the same fate as previous heroes, Leo used the polished side of his shield to see, then quietly stalked through the darkness until he spotted a shape in the shadows. The Gorgon was sleeping. This was his chance. It was now or never. He raised his sword, but just as he was about to drop it, a glint from the Gorgon's clothing caught his eye. He couldn't believe it. His pin. Suddenly everything came back to him. 
How could he even dream of harming another creature? The clatter of his sword hitting the stone woke the sleeping Gorgon, and despite how different they'd both become, they recognised each other immediately. The Gorgon explained to Leo that one day after meeting him, Athena had caught her helping another mythical creature she had found wounded near Athens. As a punishment for putting the city in danger, Athena cursed the girl, making her turn any living thing she looked upon to stone. Now, any creature she tried to help, she harmed instead. Ashamed and afraid, she hid herself away in this old temple and tried her best to avoid all living things. Leo was in complete shock. Everything he had believed about Athena and her heroes became confused in his mind. Suddenly a voice boomed through the temple. Now I see where your true loyalties lie, Leo the so-called serpent slayer. If you won't help me protect my people, then I will have to protect them from you instead. In a blind rage, she blasted Leo and the Gorgon far out into the Aegean Sea. Once again, the mighty Athena was victorious. Or so she thought. A huge dark shape rose up out of the water and loomed over Athena, ready to protect Leo and the Gorgon. But even now, the fully grown satyrs on their side, they knew they were no match for such a great and powerful goddess. Luckily, they weren't alone. The Gorgon, Leo and the other mythical creatures decided they would let Athena go on a few conditions. From that day forward, Athena promised to be more accepting of the mythical creatures of Greece. And in turn, they promised never to damage Athens or harm Athena's beloved people again. Athena lifted the Gorgon's curse and allowed the girl to use Poseidon's temple as a place to help wounded monsters. Leo went back to his lessons and even started teaching some of his own. How to deal with mythical creatures without harming them. It proved to be quite popular. And instead of spending his free time idolising heroes, he decided it was much better spent helping a friend instead. And that is the tale of Leo, the brown stone who became a Greek hero. I hope this has shown you that there are many paths to becoming a hero and that sometimes not fighting is the bravest thing you can do.